Okay, sorry, I had to deal with a student who needed some help. Um, so in the this is the constructor, and so this is what's uh, what will build a new brick piece every time that we need to build one. And you know this will happen hundreds of times, sometimes a second. So, but it doesn't matter. Um, but when we when a different class is going to build a brick piece, it needs to send in a location. Like, where do you want me to start? So we're going to ask it to send in a double called brick X and a double called brick Y. And then we're going to say, please, I'll, I also need the map. So map the map. And this isn't asking, this won't make copies of things. What, uh, with, when you pass in an object like this, um, it doesn't pass the information like it does with brick X and brick Y because these are doubles, these are primitive types. In this case, it passes in a reference to the object. So you're not making a copy of the map. You're actually just giving the brick piece access to the one object that we are using called the map. So we'll say um, X equals brick X. Uh, oops, not quite. So we say this dot the map. This copy, this this copy of the reference of the map call in in our fields. This one is equal to the map sent over as a parameter. So this for this brick pieces copy of the reference is equal to the reference that was sent over. We could do something different. Um, we could just say the game map, and then we wouldn't need the this reference because this screws people up at first. Just know it's one way to do it. So the map in our fields is equal to the map sent over as a parameter. Um, now, I just have the brick pieces starting at the center location of the brick so that it doesn't start at a corner. So that's all this little equation is going to do. We're just going to say brick x, and this is the whole reason we need the map. Brick x plus the map dot get brick width divided by 2, and y equals brick y plus map dot get brick height divided by 2. So that places the piece in the exact center at when it starts of the brick that's being broken. Now I wanted these pieces to look a little bit more alive so with dx and dy I have them getting an, uh, a, a random value at the beginning so that they don't all look the same. So we need to cast this to an end I guess we don't because it's a double. So um, we'll just say uh, math, the math class dot random, and we're going to say uh, we're going to give it a value of times 30, so that's the range. But then I'm going to say minus 15, so these can, things can start in the negative direction. They can go up. Um, and that's all. And then dy equals the same sort of thing, math dot random times 30 minus 15. We're going to do the same for size. Size uh, size equals, and this one we do have to cast into an integer because I said it was an int. Um, so math.random times, I have this set to 15 plus 2, so that none of them are smaller than 2 at the beginning, and they can go up to 17. It's totally random, you can play with that. Um, and then color, we want it to be um, the same as the brick color that you have as the weakest brick. So I just went over and looked at the map class and said, okay, what's the weakest bricks, uh, what's the weakest brick color? And that is this one. If the map that row column or map row column index equals one, it's almost ready to break, and this is the color. So, um, I just you know there's a be there are better ways. We want to keep this fairly simple this time, so we're just going to say equals new color. Um, oops, I didn't need to do the new color thing. Uh, so that's the same color as the weakest brick. And then uh, gravity, I just set it to. I played with this and figured out that I like how 0.8 looks. Um, so that's our constructor. So each brick is given a value x and y. That's the upper left-hand corner of the brick that is exploding. And it's also passed over the map. 
so that it can have access to what the current width of the brick is. So in case we change the width of the bricks, it would also adjust its center point. So it goes to the center of the brick that's breaking. It's given a random x and y velocity. It's given a random size, and it's given the color of the weakest brick, and then it's set to, the gravity is set to 0.8, which you can play with too. It also needs to be updatable, so public void, because it changes, right? Update just changes objects that need to change without us doing anything, so public void update. All we're going to say is x uh, plus equals, that just means x equals x plus, as a shorthand, plus equals dx, y plus equals the velocity in the y direction, and dy plus equals, can you guess it, gravity. Uh, again, from physics, position, uh, the next like derivative is velocity, and the velocity derivative is acceleration from Calkin. Um, so a constant change to the velocity is acceleration. A constant change to the position is velocity. Um, if that's confusing to you, I can talk to you more about it. Uh, public void, we also need to be able to draw the pieces. Draw with graphics 2D G. And again, this isn't creating a new instance of that object. This is just at saying, hey, anytime uh, you're going to use the, um, anytime you're going to draw me or I'm going to be drawn, please pass over the object the main object from the game panel, or the reference to the same object, and that object will draw me. So all you have to do is say g.setColor, color, oops, color, and g.draw, uh, or fill rect uh, from, we have to cast these to ints because they're um, doubles. size, size, and I just have them being all squares. You can play with that if you'd like. Um, and that is it for our brick pieces class. Now we're going to build another class that actually creates a list of these that is going to be called like brick explosion. I have it called. Uh, and then in the game panel class, we're going to create when bricks are broken, we're going to create instances of the brick explosion class. So that's kind of how the system is set up. Uh, all right. In the next tutorial, we'll create the brick explosion class.